Hey everybody, welcome back, Falcon Icy episode, I am not entirely sure, but that's okay. We have a goal right now, and that is to come over here and hang out, or at least not hang out, but find the Relic Hunter with um, Bertrand's help. Which, by the way, this, um, what we're doing right now, this whole thing with Bertrand, that's actually keeping his head attached to his body, because initially we came over to Bertrand to actually decapitate the man for the information needed to find his Relic Hunter. But, you know, Bertrand was able to save his life last episode around. A strange spectacle appears before your eyes on a tree stuck among the branches. There are two fresh survivor bodies deadly impaled. I like this event because it means a lot of food. 33 foods of units? Yes. We took some damage, but that's okay. We have a lot of medicine. And as you can see, we have a lot of food. And also, by the end of last episode, I ended up in the market. If you guys remember, I did some trading. And all I really did was actually just pick up some lockpick, uh, the bat claw, and a few extra ropes. And I think we got a bear trap as well. But nothing really too crazy, just picking up some more bear essentials because we were actually pretty low on those items in general. So, let's continue moving... Well, actually, one second here. Let's cure you. Cure you, because in case we have to get into some combat, I'd rather come in here with um, everybody with a full set of health here. So you're looking good, and um, I'm relatively fine. Yeah, okay. So let's come in here and find out about this Relic Hunter. You're following a barely visible trail going into the woods when you notice a sign with the words... Trespassers may be shot, written with red paint. We're not far, we just need to follow the trail and lay low. To keep us a little trigger happy, now that I can blame him for being a little paranoid. That's my Bertrand voice, but It's got a little bit of a dusty roads type of uh, feel to it, you know? Anyway, you keep following the trail and discover a lot of different signs with different warnings painted on them. The path seems to lead to a house placed atop of a hill. The house is well protected by some rocky formations and the trail is the only way to reach the house. Now, we won't have to be so sure that the keeper won't shoot us on sight. You suddenly hear a gunshot and the bullet doesn't land far from you. Then an old and ruined radio placed near another warning sign turns on and you hear a voice coming from it. Stand right there, where I can see you. If anyone moves, I'll shoot again and it wouldn't be a warning shot. The radio from which my voice comes in completely functional. Feel free to tell me why you're here and who you are. Don't you recognize me? I'm Bertrand. We're just here to ask a couple questions. Not sure what happened to the questions there, but apparently it did. Oh, Bertrand. Yes, I remember you. You're allowed to pass, but tell your friends to behave properly. Huh. That was simple enough. Uh, you proceed along the trail and you finally manage to reach the Keeper's house. The place looks heavily fortified and a couple of signs warn you that there are landmines scattered around. Oof, that's no good. Uh, the door of the building opens and a man with a sniper rifle in his shoulder comes out. Come on, don't be scared, I deactivated the minefield. Did you really though? <laughs> so, he starts walking towards you, keeping his rifle to him. So, why are you here? Uh, let's say we're tracking a group of mercenaries, or we're searching for some guys. We're searching for some guys, and we've been told that you had dealings with them. There are some high-tech people, they call themselves the Wolfpack, and then... Yeah, I guess we'll doubt them. That one right there. You must be either stupid, brave, or desperate if you want to mess with those guys. He puts the sniper rifle on the ground and takes out a pipe from his jacket. Before continuing to talk, he likes, uh, before continuing to talk, he lights the pipe and starts smoking. But you're also lucky. I usually ask a price for giving information. It's part of my job, but not this time. Those bastards who betrayed my trust didn't honor our agreement, and I don't like liars, especially when they owe me something valuable. He pauses for a second. Why are you searching for them? Um, yeah, revenge, kind of the same thing, but they took our friends primarily. Very well. Since you have no sympathy for them, I'll be more than happy to tell you everything. What do you want to know precisely? Alrighty, good. Uh, where did they, l where did they l took, where did they took, oh, where did they take, I get you. <laughs> where did they take all that stuff is what that should have said. Uh, who are them, or who are they? Uh, are they working for someone, or how can I find them? Okay. Let's see, wh where did they took take all that stuff? I don't know for sure. Well, most things can be found around the world if you have the bullets to pay for them, but some of their stuff is quite awesome. Probably they work for someone that has access to a lot of Good pre-apocalypse equipment. Okay. Um, are they working for someone? A good question. As mercenaries, they do a lot of different jobs around the White Wastelands, but I suspect that they have a solid work relationship with the same guy who provided them the high-tech stuff. Don't take what I say for the absolute truth, but I think that they have some special work for someone who has access to high-tech items and advanced scientific knowledge. Uh, <laughs> who are them? 
Uh, the Wolf Pack, a bloody group of mercenaries. They're only... They're one of the best squads I've ever seen, not only because they're well equipped, but also because they fight smart. It's not an easy pad that you are taking, but they're still human beings, nothing that a bullet can put to eternal rest. There are three of them. Their leader's nickname is Ghost, nothing original, but it suits her personality. See, it's a girl! I'm telling you! The dreams that I keep having, it's them. It's fucking them, man. And she's the girl in the dreams with the weird little suit that looks like the mercenary suit. Uh, anyway, uh, there are three of them. Their leader's nickname is Ghost. Nothing original, but it suits her personality. I don't know how much. Uh, I don't know much about the others. She was the only one who talked to me. And ultimately, how can I find them? That won't be easy, but not necessarily impossible. They're feared and dangerous. They probably don't expect anyone to be chasing them. I'm afraid that I can't do much to help you track them, but I'm sure of something. They had to do some stuff around the veil, so you won't need to chase them around the whole world. And you're not the only one interested in chasing them. Another group of people came to me a few days ago for the same reason. They witnessed the kidnapping of their fellow mates too, and it's just like you, they thought that chasing one of the most dangerous mercenary girls is a good idea. I wonder if that's um, Carlos people. Although I think Carlos and April said that their people was m were majorly wiped out though, right? Hmm. Anyway, if you want to find them, you should head to the Ammo Nation because that is where they were headed after I told them the same things I told you. Search for Tanya. As far as I understand, she's the leader of the group. I suggest that you go to the Ammo Nation anyway. It's the perfect place to learn more about the Wolf Pack. I don't know where her price. I don't know her precise location, but she was willing to hang around the Ammo Nation, do some jobs, and keep her eyes open. Alrighty, is this all? I know it's not much, but you have a trail to follow, even if it's a fragile and uncertain. How could I have done more anyway? We're talking about the Wolf Pack, a dangerous group of mercenaries. It's not even my field of work. I'm sorry if you expected more, but I suppose that a small clue is better than nothing, and to be honest, you were lucky that I told you everything for free. Now, unless you have something else for me, I'd like to return my work. Good luck, stranger. May you survive in this struggle. Well, I wasn't being rude, like, is that all? Like, I was just saying, like, as in, okay, thank you, is there anything else that you could want to add? <laughs> this guy seemed really defensive about that whole, is that all question. Anyway, the keeper comes back into his house while you begin to walk away from the place. See what I tell ya, I brought you here and you have a new trail to follow. Old Bertrand did his job and didn't try anything stupid. I mean, I've proven myself useful, I got your back when you're necessary and fight along you guys. Uh, what are we talking about? <laughs> I want to join you. Hunting alone the woods may have granted me a place in the garden, but I spend more time alone in the wide wasteland and it warmed my house. I don't want to do that anymore. I'm tired of living alone, hunting for people I barely know. It's better to walk on mental than living in this kind of life. <laughs> I'm not even sure. In my mind, this sounds like dusty roads, but that's what I'm aiming for. But I'm not really sure if I'm actually, you know, nailing it. It's going to probably sound really ridiculous once I actually edit my video. My movie's like, God, that's just terrible. Anyway, um... So here is the question: Do we want to take um, Bertrand along with us? I, remember, he's a pretty good fighter all around. So yeah, yeah, sure. He didn't lie to us anyway, right? So you can come. Uh, yeah, that's the one I want. Bertrand smiles, showing all his missing teeth. Thank you. I promise you won't regret that. Now that the Bertrand matter is solved, I'd like to talk about what the keeper said. I don't like this whole story. I understand why we are tracking those mercs down, but I fail to understand how you can't see that it's an impossible task. Look at us. We are just a bunch of survivors struggling each day to get some food to eat around a campfire. We aren't fighters. We fight to live another day, not the contrary. I honestly don't care about the risk. I joined you when I had nothing to live for. Now everything is different. I can't bring the ones I lost, but I can try to bring back the ones my friends lost. But we are alive now. Putting ourselves on a suicide mission won't solve anything. We'll only get killed. Why should we kill ourselves just like that? Um, we won't fail, dog. I'm just saying that we need a proper plan. We need to carefully think about our every move. We are dealing with a real danger. We should always remember that. The sooner we find them, the sooner we will be able to understand what we need to do. I never had the chance to visit the Ammo Nation, but as far as I know, it should be one hell of a place full of soldiers and gun traders. It's the one place here in the Vale which can be considered a real settlement. I've been there once, and trust me, the place is a little intimidating. Guys, I know that the place and I may have some context. Guys, I know the place and I may have some context who could give us the last piece of information you need. We just need to lay low. The place is full of armed people, and shootouts are far too common, so we don't want to get in trouble or draw anyone's attention to us. 
Man, Bertrand is paying off in spades, isn't he? Like, you know, he brought us over here. He apparently has a contact over in the Ammo Nation. He is turning out to be an amazing pickup for us. Uh, you resume your travels while everyone keeps talking about what lies ahead. In just a few minutes, you leave behind the Keeper's Hideout. Alrighty, so let's take a look at our diary here and see where this location could possibly be at now. And that is, oof, that is quite a bit of a travel. Luckily, we have a lot of food, a lot of gasoline, a lot of ammunition. Yeah, we're, we're fine, man. So, it is time for us to hit the road one more time, Jack. Let's zoom in here really quickly. Um, we have not checked one, two, three, four out. It's putting us quite of a bit out of our way, I would say, though, isn't it? It kind of is. Unless we decide to go, like, through all this stuff, as opposed to just go down up this road. This looks like something we'll probably have to go to at some point, so I'm thinking we'll probably hit up these places regardless of which at some point, so uh, let's just cut straight up. Besides, the last thing we did over here was these two areas? Maybe this over here? I don't think we've done this or this, right? So taking the road would lead us through all this stuff which we've ignored beforehand. So yeah, yeah I think that's a pretty good pat. Uh, I want to hit this place up beforehand though to see if we can actually gather some more free food. Uh, you find some good place to gather some food. Let's go ahead and uh, spend six hours here for six food and nine medkits. Perfect. Alrighty. And from this point onward, we are going to go straight north, I would say. And we'll try to converge into the main road pretty soon. Have we been to this one before? I feel like we have. I just don't really recall it too well. But I feel like we definitely have. Scavenge, you find a small town. Uh, two hours, four hours, six hours. We'll do four hours. You find a little house with a sturdy closed door. Crowbar, lockpick, or try to blow up the door. <laughs> Jesus. Let's just try to use the crowbar. You pry the door open, and while exploring, the, you hear a beast noise of the lynx again. Okay, let's go ahead and uh, let's just shoot the lynx down. You manage to wound the lynx, which runs away, leaving some bloodstains behind itself. We got teddy bear, frying pan, and another book, and 18 bullets as well. That actually paid for itself. Great. Alrighty, there's another gathering spot over here. I guess we'll hit this up, gathering spot, and then get on the road and just follow it straight up, right? I think that works out. Another area to scavenge. You find some apartments. Let's go ahead and use four hours here. We will use our... Let's use our bad claw to get up here. And we found one rope and one gasoline. Good. At least we didn't get into any sort of big trouble. So that is quite alright. Excuse me. I would like to gather some food for six hours. We found 19 food and three more med kits. Oh my god. We're just bawling right now. And sure, we might as well inspect this area too for two hours. Why not? Let's go ahead and use a rope here. Uh, we have something falling on us. Let's see if we could just uh, help my companions get out of the building. Took some damage. We got ten, f uh, two fuel and one animal fur. Okay. Not amazing, but sure, I'll take it. You see a body near a cliff, apparently falling from above. It could be risky to loot the body, but apparently there are items on it. Uh, what are we looking for? Medicine or ammunition? I feel like we have so much, uh, medicine that we might as well just pack up the extra ammo for not only defensive purposes, but also for trading purposes, right? So we will do that. We took some damage, but hey, I'll definitely take four damage for 18 bullets. It's not even a question of why, you know? It's a question of definitely. It's not even a question, as a matter of It's a statement. Definitely do it. That's what I actually meant. Uh, four hours seems relatively fine. We'll use a torch over here, and this will, yeah, uh, you know, use a torch, and suddenly the building just crumbles on you. Help my companions out of the building. We found some more scrap, food, medkits, and gasoline. That actually plays out relatively well. Let's go over here and heal ourselves if we can. Any more experience on you? Oh, five. Perfect. We should be able... Ooh. Yeah. Okay, let's get a Bowman to six. Perfect. Alrighty. Now I'm looking a lot better at uh, my bow skills, I would say. Demetra needs to heal you up quite a bit. April as well. And Bertrand as well. Alrighty. Everybody's looking really tip-top shape, a lot of food, a lot of gasoline. Oh, you walk a lot faster on the road, interesting. Alright, you're walking while you stumble on a solid object. Ooh, nice, more ammunition. Definitely take the 29 one, why, do, why would I take less? Alright, yeah, you definitely walk a lot faster on the road. Get on the road, dog. There you go, see, you just zoom by when you're on the road. No, get out of the snow! Let's find out what's in this gas station over here. Find a gas station, we'll use four hours, sounds pretty decent. Let's use another rope, get to the top, and 
you know, you get to the top of a gas station and then suddenly a Lynx is up there ambushing you. We will shoot him down for two gasoline, lockpick, and oh, nice, more binos, great. Those trade for a lot, as you guys remember. How are we doing here with our trip? Pretty good so far. There's uh, what looks to be like a church type of area over here. We'll take a look at this. Why not? And there's another gathering spot over here we might as well take advantage of as well. You find a small town. Four hours is going to be enough. Let's go ahead and lockpick this police station. This Lynx just doesn't leave me alone. <laughs> We've like angered this Lynx to a point where no matter what from this point on, every single event will lead to a Lynx attacking us and me shooting it. And apparently this is like an, a never ending cycle. You know, it's like one of Dante's um, circle. One of Dante's circles of hell. That's what I think what I'm looking for here. But this is basically the one where every single event is going to lead to the Lynx attacking me. Me shooting it, it running away, leaving bloodstains behind. Ad infinitum. Dante just forgot to write about it, but I'm telling you, it's there. We got 38 bullets out of this, though, and 9 medicine. We also got dynamite, book, and teddy bear. Really good stuff. Alright. Let's come up over here to this gathering point, I would say, next. We'll we use 4 hours to gather up 10 food and 10 medicine, or 4 medicine. Great. Um, yeah, we're looking splendid right now. Let's zoom out here really quickly. We have one, two, three, four areas, five. We can hit all these up before we get to the main point. And if we're going to a relatively dangerous area, which is the ammo nation, which apparently it's supposed to be dangerous, I think it would probably be in our best advantage to try to come in there as stocked up as possible. So four hours seems relatively fine. We'll just shoot this lock open and we got two fuel, uh, another axe and some more rope. Perfect. And you have my rope! That's the rope version of my Gimli axe thing, obviously. You don't know about the other Gimli, but there was two of them. One of them, unfortunately, only had a rope to offer to the um, Fellowship, so they kind of cut them off the final cut of the, of the movie itself. But if you look at the pre-filming phasing, there was another dwarf that actually offered the rope. I don't know, man. Apparently, something about Lord of the Rings and, you know, just having something against ropes. That's not really true. I just made all that up. <laughs> Just a heads up, in case you were really looking into it. Like, you know, Falcon could never lie in. Yeah, unfortunately, I would, for the sake of this um, bullshit story, I suppose. Uh, you find an apartment, barely standing despite the damage it suffered. Its stairs are collapsed, so oh, we are out of bad claws. We only have rope. Let's use one of our ropes here. Get to the top. <laughs> I told you. I fucking told you, this Lynx is just never going to give up on killing me. I will shoot him and there you go, see bloodstains, he runs off, we got some medicine, we got some fuel. A lighter, I never had a lighter before in this game, perfect, take everything. Let's find out about this lighter here really quickly. Uh, you would probably be tools, right? No, not tools? Where's the lighter at? Oh, you're just regular, whatever. An old lighter takes more than one try to light it. Okay. Oh, I thought it would be a little bit better than that. Let's come over here then. We have one, two, one, two, three locations, and then we head over to the actual spot there, which I'm actually excited about. Abandoned house, we'll do four hours, and we're almost out of ropes here, but sure, we'll try it out. No links this time around, I'm actually kind of surprised. We got a lockpick though, take everything. Come down here, and this should be an easy, oh hey, we got a bandit still. 250 HP, and we have range on him, so let's go ahead and start by shooting him down. That's a lot of hit points right there of damage. No big surprise. I will shoot this guy with an arrow. I will miss. Do this again. <laughs> Their morale is gone already. God. I am just destroying everything right now. And the reason why this is actually happening as well is because the more people we have in party, it's essentially almost like a mob rule when it comes to fighting with a lot more people in your group. So we're causing more damage because we're not... Like, we said Mobile Logic could come along, we said that Bertrand could come along, so, you know, that's actually helping us out there a bit. Um, we're out of rope and the bad claws, so let's try to climb this by ourselves, and nothing bad happened. We got some gasoline, bullets, some medkits, and another frying pan, take everything. Let's get on this road if we can, guys. There you go. Just zoom straight up. Oh! Hey! While you're traveling, you suddenly find your group surrounded by some poorly equipped raiders. They outnumber you and ang angrily ask for food, otherwise they will kill you. I could threaten them, I could fight them, or I could just pay their f toll. You know, I could pay them to avoid combat, but come on, dog. Do you want to fuck with my group? Let's fight them. You have to fight. I'm glad I'll easily fight you guys. Melee. Now, melee, we didn't do too much damage because obviously we don't have it as, as amazing a weapon in melee that we do as our, you know, bow. 
But at the same time, it means as well that the rest of my group just isn't really that great at melee as they are at range attacks. So let's come over here. Let's go ahead and take this guy down with a bow. We missed. Going for melee again. I mean, we're still doing some pretty decent damage, so there is that. Uh, shoot him until he falls in the ground dead. Take him down with an arrow. Try to take him down with a single shot. Shoot him until he falls down dead. I think I like that. Uh, apparently, we missed. Why is there no um, things showing up anymore? Like little stories that showed, showed up before. Might be bugged again. Might have to reload the game. Melee fight. Some more damage to them. Let's go ahead and take them down with an arrow. We missed. Go through that. Missed, and this should end it. They're leaving. All right, great. Yeah, I'm not sure what's going on there. I might have to restart the thing here. But this is, this is the last episode I'm recording here today, so not really a big deal. Hopefully by next time I record, uh, there'll be another update to patch up some of the issues that we've been running into this uh, recording session anyway. Uh, apartment building. We'll use four hours. There's barely any risk with that. As a matter of fact, I might as well just take two hours. Uh, there's some manhole on the ground, but it's locked shut. <laughs> we all know how Falcon feels about the locked manholes on the ground. On the ground! Again, not the other ones, but the ones on the ground. Uh, we'll just shoot it open, why not? Sewing kit and some gasoline take everything, and here we are. At our location, finally. And I think this is the perfect opportunity to wrap it up here today. We will go into Ammo Nation next time around. And hopefully nothing bad happens. And hopefully you guys are enjoying it. Again, if you are, keep leaving your thumbs up and your likes. The support always does me a lot. I will catch you next time.